everyone, it's Mithril and welcome back to my journey of learning Japanese. Yes, in my last video I mentioned that I was interested in returning to my Japanese studies. Well, I returned and I think it would be fun to document that journey here on this channel as well. So between my last Japanese video and this one, I don't believe I've made much progress at all in my Japanese. It's been a year and a half since then, and a lot of things have happened in between. I've also focused a lot of my free time on art and Evolve Artist, studying for my actuarial exams, and making YouTube videos. However, my desire to know Japanese has never gone away during this time. I've just been waiting for the right time in my life to get back into it. That time where I'm less busy, less stressed, less things are happening. Well. I don't think that mythical perfect time has existed or ever will. However, some things have changed within me that make this the time that I wanted to get back into things. First off, I think I realized why the methods I was trying before totally crashed and burned. Through learning art, I realized that I like the idea of customizing my own curriculum, researching the best books and methods, and finding some secret cheat code self-study routine that would target exactly what I was trying to do, and cheaply, or for free, and circumventing the art school scam and blah blah blah. I tried that for years before I finally came to the conclusion that I hate studying from textbooks, and I hate having to make my own structure. And I realized this only after I took a leap of faith and invested in Evolve Artist. It claims to be this all-inclusive art fundamentals curriculum that gives you everything you need in order to learn all the fundamentals of art. It even gives you the most important supplies, the kind where if you got your own, you might question whether it's you or the supplies messing with your ability to do the homework correctly. And now I'm following this one thing and not getting distracted by every shiny new book or course, and also knowing that this is a high quality quality course validated by hundreds of students before me. Through this, I've been improving faster than I ever thought possible. It also made me realize that I can be different from other people and we can both be right. People can like all these books and courses and improve a lot on them, but if it doesn't work for me, then that's fine. There's something out there for someone like me. But if I keep sticking to the stuff that doesn't work for me, then I'm denying myself the chance to find the tool that really clicks, the one that doesn't make me question my ability to ever learn something. Now, back to Japanese and my desire to cobble together my own curriculum as if I know better than all the Japanese teachers out there. I got multiple textbooks and tried to work through them simultaneously. I kept five different Anki decks active simultaneously, trying to study kanji through remembering the kanji. Used a different tool to make flashcards out of anime episodes and an Anki plugin to rearrange those flashcards by morphing to create N plus one flashcard sessions, and attended in-person classes with a tutor every weekend. Now that I said all that, <laughs> I realized why I got overwhelmed and quit studying Japanese. So when I realized I wanted to get back into things, my first instinct was to not do anything that I was doing before, because not only was it overly complicated and time consuming, it didn't work. All of the grammar instruction was in the textbooks, and like I said before, I hate textbooks. So I only got through about one chapter of each of the books. Remembering the kanji was relatively easy, and I learned to recognize and write hundreds of kanji. That would be totally useless unless I learned a bunch of other stuff to go with it. So basically in the end, I just learned a bunch of vocabulary, which is great for those times where I'd catch a word in an anime and be like, OMG, I know that word. Other than that, I felt no satisfaction or progress from what I was doing. It was just a mess. Now that I was trying to get back into Japanese, I immediately felt the stress stacking up on me as I did those Google searches you always do when you start something new. How do I learn Japanese? How do I learn Japanese? Reddit. Best resources for learning Japanese. And all that. And as I found interesting looking stuff, I looked up reviews and opinions on it. And on every thread, there were people saying, yeah, that resource is fine, but don't be like me and just research stuff all day and not pick something to stick to. Pressure! Stress! <laughs> However, this time I had some tools to narrow things down. I knew I didn't want to use a textbook, so all of those were out. 
I also know I needed something structured and all-inclusive, so I know I'm not missing out on anything, and that if it's truly important, it'll come back and be reinforced for me. This has been super important for me within Evolve and Art because it's completely eliminated my need to keep looking up new courses and books that I think will fill some hole in my knowledge and wasting money on stuff I haven't even opened yet. Basically, I was looking for Evolve Artist for Japanese. According to everything I knew about learning Japanese from Reddit and random online guides, the recommended method is by using a textbook like Genki and the associated workbook. Well, no textbooks for me, so that was out. Also, that would require me to hold myself to a self-studying schedule, which I'm not into. I considered apps like Duolingo or Lingodeer, but popular consensus seemed to agree that they were supplementary material at best potentially harmful at worst, and while free, convenient, and would encourage me to make progress every day, they definitely did not meet my requirement that they be comprehensive. After talking to some people who had finished the entirety of these curriculums, they felt like they had learned a couple vocabulary words, but overall nothing to actually apply, and they didn't feel like they'd improved very much. I briefly considered looking into whatever the all Japanese all the time people do, which is basically immersing yourself in Japanese as much as you can, by watching, listening, and reading, and not studying grammar at all. But I'm not really interested in making Japanese this huge, dedicated time commitment in my life. And the concept of never learning formal grammar is making my heart beat faster just thinking about it. Then I remember this Japanese course that I'd heard of about a year ago and that they had emailed me something. <laughs> so I found the email from Native Shark and I realized that I had entered into a giveaway they were holding for a lifetime membership to their program. I didn't, actu I didn't actually remember anything about this course, so I looked it up online and I realized that they used to be known as Nihongo Shark and that they used to make resources for Japanese learners. In fact, the Anki deck I used for remembering the kanji came from them. If you don't know anything about Anki, it's a flashcard app and you can download shared decks from the Anki website. So I've never actually been on Nihongo Shark before. From what I could tell online, people were generally positive about the old Nihongo Shark materials, but they didn't really know what to make of Native Shark yet. After all, it's only been up for a couple months. Before, they offered supplements to other materials and a few months ago, they took all of that down and started a subscription service for their comprehensive Japanese course. Anyway, I felt like it looked really enticing because it is offering that comprehensive, all-in-one, all-inclusive type experience that I crave. And it also has that scheduled structure built in. It claims that all you have to do is show up, click study now every day, keep up your streak, and it takes care of the rest. So basically, it takes that grammar textbook, smashes it with functional phrases that aren't school dialogue from the 90s, mixes that up with kanji mnemonic flashcards, sprinkles a bit of space repetition on top, and serves it all up with habit-building streaks and study analytics. It's exactly what I've been looking for. The standard pace seems to be about four years of nearly daily studying to get you to a place where you could pass the N1 exam, I think, but the aim of the course isn't to pass the JLPT, they just introduce stuff in whatever order they think is most functional or useful. It's just through that you happen to learn enough Japanese to pass the test. However, like Evolve, it is a paid course, but they do offer a seven-day free trial to see what the units are like and how the curriculum is set up. And I feel like I should point out that it doesn't require any sort of payment method to access the free trial, so it really is free. So I tried it out, and did I like it? Did I sign up for it? Find out next time. So I've signed up for a year now. I'll be making an in-depth video soon about the factors that I considered in my decision and a one-month update from using Native Shark. But if you'd like to read ahead about my experience with the free trial, I will link my blog post below. All in all, I'm super excited to be getting back into Japanese and also digging into this cool new learning resource and also having the opportunity to share this learning journey here as well. Next video will be an update to Evolve Artist and the one after that will be about Native Shark, pros and cons, features, why I chose it, all sorts of in-depth stuff like that. Stay safe and healthy out there, and remember that talent is a myth. Now, get back to work.